Thanks for tuning in to CCMMagazine.com. I am Kevin Spartman, Managing Editor of CCM Magazine, and I am here with Social Club Misfits. Yes. Fern oh, yes. and Marty, or is it Mern and Farty? I, I just wanted to get, I had to say Farty on camera. When we, just... have, our, when we have our kid show, <laughs> oh, that's the name of it. That's kids, awesome. We'll never forget. Yeah. Awesome. So let's start at the beginning yeah. for some of our audience that may just be kind of catching up to you guys. Yeah. Tell us about the Misfits part of your name and what does that mean? Yeah, so uh, we call our fans Misfits and what a Misfit is to us is someone who's in this world but not of it. You know, never be afraid of who God's called you to be. And a lot of times who God's called you to be is totally countercultural to what the world says you should be. So we are all about embracing our identity as Christians, as believers, as people who are in this world but not of it. What about your convictions in following Christ um, has led you to fronting a hip hop band? Some people know that I did some prison time and when I came home, I didn't know what my life was gonna look like. I always wanted to rap, but I didn't know what that was gonna look like. So like when I came home, I always, I always felt that there was a bigger calling, there was something. When I met Marty and we started making music together, just all that stuff started like falling into place. And uh, when we started doing Social Club and, and just started making these records, it, it just almost seemed like so organic and so natural and yeah. authentic. Um, we just always knew that it was something special. And so we would just hope that people would communicate, that we, what we would communicate, people would relate to it and see that we're just coming from a place of just real, hopefully that they could see that, they could see Actually, hopefully they could see Jesus' face on us yeah. when they hear the music. That'd be the coolest thing. So beyond the music, because uh, we, can, we can hear and see it there, but beyond the music, maybe give us some practical applications to how you personally bring light yeah. or positivity Absolutely. into a dark situation, yeah. or yeah. if you can even recall an instance where, where you were yeah. able to do that. Right now, Hollywood is, is going through a total revamping because what's happening is the system was so corrupt that it would cause people to be corrupt. So you have sexual harassment that's allowed, different things that are allowed because the system is so broken. And so what we believe when we go into the night, we're challenging those systems. We're challenging wherever we go, we're carrying the light of Jesus Christ. We're the ones who are changing the atmosphere when we walk in. We don't have to adapt to this broken system. And I think that applies to anything. It applies to our country right now. Like I think in, in so many areas of life, you know, you go to schools, whether you work, your job and everyone has this tone of they want to be lazy and they want to be, no, no, no. You go and you carry the excellence that God's called you to be. You're called to be great because God calls us to live our best life. And we live our best life by li living what God's called us to do. Every day when we take up our cross and we walk this path that, God's ha that God has for us, he, kind of, he directs it. And when you begin to follow God, it, it is tough. But then he begins to purify you and, and work through the Holy Spirit daily to make you this person that could be a beacon of light to wherever you go. And so we go to we perform in clubs, we perform in churches, we perform anywhere we can. And a lot of times, you know, the club we're performing at might have had some crazy band before us, and people are getting drunk and they're getting. But we go in there and we carry this message, and we're taught. We we don't believe that Christians are supposed to be on the defensive. We believe that we're offensive. When we walk in, we carry the atmosphere. We change it. You know, we don't have to respond. We're the ones who are setting the, 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 the traction of what things should be. You're the change agents. That's yeah, right. we are. And we fully embrace that. And I feel like, it, I feel like for a lot of people and for many years, it's always been like, let's respond to what the world's doing yeah. instead of us being the trendsetters and being the ones where, you know, we show that we're going to change the face of what Christian music looks like because it's not going to be Christianese. We're going to get real with people. We're going to get honest and we're going to love on people. And a lot of things that me and Fern do, we've never seen another artist do before because yeah. I just think that God's starting to create new ground. And, you know, we're starting to do more worship hip hop, which before us really didn't really, it wasn't really happening, but we feel like we're going to start to change and set a different in motion, different things for hip hop. And not only for hip hop, but for the culture of Christianity. We want to change the face of it. The message is not changing, but you know, we're trying to reach these young kids that are far from God. One thing about us, we just never been as, we've never been scared to do God things. Yeah. You know how artists like, oh my God, this might not be good for my brand. This might not. We've never been scared to do a God thing. If it came to us and it was an idea and it was like a God thing or a, something that you know, kind of derived strictly from God. We've never been afraid. We still ran with it, man. That's this is the new this is like a new way the generation worships now. Like you're going to see 
people like this, but you know what? You're gonna see our hands lifted up. You're gonna see our, our eyes and our hearts to the sky. The whole time we're on stage, I'm, I'm literally just praying over the kids. I mean, I know that sounds crazy, but it's true because it's all about changing lives now, yeah. paying it forward. We went through what we went through. And if we could stop somebody from even going through some of the stuff we went through, yeah. we're doing good. Yeah. You know, you guys, for better or worse, and we'll, we'll talk about that, are a Christian band yeah. on a Christian label. Absolutely. So what, what disadvantages does it, does it have? But, but maybe just tell yeah. us you know, what that's brought to you guys and, and what's that allowed you to yeah. do. I don't think there's any disadvantages. You know, I believe that we've never been told we can't do something. That's right. Um, whether it was uh, dropping an album being number one on the charts or whether it was performing at a certain arena or club. I, I don't think there's any. I think that a lot of times the, the limits are in people's minds. That's right. So they think, oh, I'm Christian, they're not going to want me. When you go in that mindset, no, no, you know, you're not really convincing. And so when we go in, we feel like we carry the favor of our Father, of God. So we'll, it's funny because we've, we've had favor with cities, we've had favor with mayors, we've had fair, favor with um, people at iTunes that don't like to promote Christian music. That's they right. don't want to, but they love us. They fall in love with us. And it's nothing because we're, we say the right things or it's just that I just think that Jesus was a personal person. You know, like Jesus touched the leper. Jesus did stuff and touched the woman. And, and like, you know, like he did things and broke the, the stereotypes. And, and we're trying to break these stereotypes in our everyday life. And I feel like as a Christian, we better come with our A game. Because the truth is, the, mu the world does have great music. That's right. They have great musicians, and they have great producers. And so if we're going to call us Christian musicians, we feel like it's important for us to be great. And so I, I don't really feel like there's any disadvantages for, I don't, ever. I mean, we performed in arenas and different countries, and we just, been, we just carry a blessing that is all because of God, because we've been faithful and not ashamed of it. I think that right now we have, a, in our culture, especially in Christian hip-hop, a lot of people are embarrassed. Yeah. They're embarrassed to be Christian. I'm like, it's the, we share the greatest message mm. and we've never been denied no. of anything. You know, like we serve the best God. We, yeah. we, we have the savior, the creator of the heavens and earth who has given us a gift and it's up to us to use it. But I think that there's a lot of wisdom that needs to be um, used whenever you go anywhere. And so we've never been limited I mean, we're going on the road show. That's arenas yeah, that's where right. Beyonce performed or where Jay-Z performed. And we're going, we're going to talk about God. I mean, we carry the greatest message. And the, I mean... One, one of the things I say all the time, I say it in, in the new album, uh, we always keep Christ in the center from the beginning. We know that God is the reason why we're here with you, yeah. why we dropped the album, why we signed the Capitol, why we started making those songs in the beginning. Uh, the second that we think it's me and him, everything's going to fail, yeah. fall to the ground. We know that. We live by that every day. So as long as we keep Christ in the center, this is always going to win. And you can hear that here. This will always win as long as God's in the center because yeah. he wants us to push him. Yeah. And we're not scared. The, the hook on the song Lucky on Into the Night is kind of tongue-in-cheek, but, but that's kind of what you're saying is, is you know, we... It's, it's not luck. I mean, yeah. we, we yeah. feel called. To maybe do this we got and lucky. Maybe. And then we it. talk about how we, it was not maybe. Yeah. We worked for this. I yeah. mean, I had to work four jobs. I mean, my first, um, I actually did a documentary with a guy in the city about the first place I performed. And literally, right across, like the police started, like we had a move because the police started catching somebody. Someone was running from the police. The area I first performed in was so bad. But I also worked corporately and then on the weekends would go and serve at the church. And I would go and rap in front of people and, and crowds of three little kids, you know, and you still have to go out there and do it. But like, is it luck or maybe did we work? Because I believe, we believe that yeah. when God's called you and given you a gift, you have to work it. It doesn't, doors just don't open. Yeah. That's the wisdom part where you use godly wisdom to say, this is the best decision and this is where I go. And I think it's essential for every believer to know that Things don't, just don't happen. You have to make them happen. And the fact that you carry the favor of God, it actually makes every situation better. Since, since this is such a beautiful platform, I always want to take the time to tell artists, listen, chase your dreams responsibly. Like, don't just like, oh, I rap or like I sing or I play the violin and just like not pay your rent or like just ask your friends for money or start a GoFundMe. Like, <laughs> this is like, you got to want it. You got to really know that like, this is hard work. Yeah. And to get to a place like this, God bless that we're here now, 
man, we used to get off planes from California. I'm calling my boss, hey man, I don't think I'm gonna make it, dog. Like, I just got home and we had to get on roofs and work. And yeah. you know, this is a beautiful place where we at now, but I tell kids, chase your dream responsibly, be responsible, pay your bills, like respect your mom. Yeah. Like, don't just like think this is just something hocus pocus and it just happens. It, it, it's work, it takes and, a lot of work. And for years we didn't make money. I mean, yeah. we did it for free because we loved the message, we, we feel like we've been called to share this message. Yeah. It was never about money. We went to, we went to California, I remember our first out-of-state performance, we flew ourselves with money that we made from a show. Uh, before, we flew ourselves, put ourselves in a hotel. We had a fight for what we wanted because we knew that there was a call of God to reach this genera the generation that we, we're a part of. They need to hear this about God, a, a real message. And sometimes, you know, my parents, they love the Gaithers. They're actually going on a Gaither's cruise, of all things. And so, it's a good cruise. But, but, you, know, you like, guys are not performing on that I one. I wish. I wish. <laughs> Please Listen, set that up, sir. We tried to get the Gaith a Gaither sample, but we're still working on it. But, um, you know, they, every generation has a group of artists that reach them. And we're reaching our generation yeah. with the message of hope, the message of Jesus Christ, That's the right. message that he is there for you, you're not alone, that he fights with you, alongside of you, and he's, you're not alone. You know? you know, everything that probably we ever wanted somebody to tell us, we're not gonna let you go through that. We're gonna tell you. Yeah. Sometimes I was like lonely at night and just like, or he was possibly suicidal at some point in his life and just yeah. wishing somebody would speak into your life and it was just three in the morning. You know what, we wanna be those guys that you could turn on this music and at three in the morning, when I meet you right there, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, feel the presence of God, feel joy, like that's where we're here to do. That's what we wanna do. So you mentioned the road show uh, a little while ago. Um, so you, obviously you're going to be performing songs from Into the Night. Yeah. So um, maybe take us through uh, this experience that's about to happen. Like, what are you most excited to perform on stage in that in that venue? I gotta tell you, we just uh, Air Air One Radio. They just like added War Cry. Yeah. So War Cry is just like going like where we never thought it like before, and yeah. so that's going to be pretty surreal to perform be our in front first of time thousands. It. Yeah, in front I'm of just thousands. Dropped, uh, four days ago. Yeah. So I, I love that song. I love, uh, there's a song on the album called Say Goodbye, yeah. which has that like old school hip hop with the message. I really feel like, I'm, I'm interested to see how people react. That's you know, right. like <laughs> this is a different crowd than we're used to. Yeah. And we've been just blessed to have this opportunity. And so we're really excited <laughs> and um, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, I look forward to it. Look forward to seeing the uh, for Kane Country. Yeah. Uh, little little spoiler alert. We got a little something with yeah, them. Yeah. So we're, we remix one of their songs. So we're gonna do something with them. Yeah. It's gonna be great. I mean, it's really gonna be a great experience, and we're blessed to we're blessed that they would consider us. I mean, it's an honor. You know, we. It's funny. Like I think of Winter Jam. I think of Roadshow. Right. Like these are things that we did when I was a youth pastor, and and years ago when I when I had four, I literally had four jobs: a so youth pastor, I worked corporate, I, I did outreach, and doing all these different things. And like these are things like even like Rock the Universe. Like yeah. rock, we would go there as as young people, and now we are blessed with the opportunity to be on the stage that we used to go to. So we hope to reach the younger version of us. Yeah. And um and and it's just you know it's funny how God kind of. I never thought I'd be on a stage. And, I, you know, we never thought that it would happen. We just worked the call of God that was inside of us. And I think that's important that, again, people understand that if God's called you to do something, go after it. And you never know the doors that are, are going to open up. And we always say this on stage. Every time you say yes to God, yeah. you're, you're giving an opportunity for someone else. You know, when you say no to God, it affects more than you. When you say yes to God, it affects more than you. So every yes and every no that you, you know, I remember going to church for the first time, and if someone didn't invite me to church, I don't know where I'd be. I, we wouldn't be here. I, I went to church when I was 18. Because like, someone said yes to God. I remember going to a festival with you, and uh, a young lady comes up at a meet and greet, and, uh, and she's shaking. like She's literally like crying, and she's shaking, and she's telling us her testimony. And so I'm sitting here in this room doing this interview with you guys, and I'm thinking to myself, what if we never, what if I'm, because I remember you asked me. Nobody knows this. This is exclusive. He asked me. He's like, we, we asked each other, hey, you think we could do music together? And, and, and I remember telling him, like, I'm about to have my daughter right now. Like, I just came home from prison. Like, like I'm working this little job. I'm like, this is crazy, you know what I'm saying? But I'll be there and let's try. And, uh, and it's just been an amazing experience. After we said yes to God, we've seen the most beautiful things. And I would hate to think if we had said no, that people's lives that could have yeah. been lost. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> it's scary. It's crazy. Yeah, you mentioned Say Goodbye, um, One of a Kind. Uh, it's kind of 
the old school yeah, yeah, yeah. songs and on one the of album. a kind's on ESPN too. Okay, so yeah, it's yeah, funny because yeah. we have number back one back. and that's his solo, and then one of a kind's my solo. Both of them are on ESPN. They're playing right back now. to back. I'm like, I guess they just wanted songs with the word one in it. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense to me. Um, but the, the the album too. I mean, it, it's kind of a dichotomy for you guys because it's got some old school yeah. on there. It's it's got some some new flavor, yeah. but it, it's got some of that Latin feel too. So um, maybe if you can just tell us a little bit more about. Like your musical backgrounds, yeah. like what, uh, what, what's, what's uh, put those spices into what you guys are doing? There? For, first and foremost, I'm Puerto Rican, yeah. So that's already the sauce in the pot, <laughs> um, the sofrito in the pot. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm a pastor's son, so naturally, you know, I was church drumming. You know what I'm saying? And then also, as I got a little bit older, I started to play the trumpet. Uh, I played at the UN Band of the Hour for a couple years, and then like I was always good like talking. So I took that and then, you know, mixed it with some music and I wound up rapping, you know what I'm saying? And I would have never thought I would take it this far, you know, actually one of the songs I wrote, I talk about my cousin who's doing life in prison and uh, he told me, he's like, man, I remember talking to him, like, I'm never coming home. Like literally he said, I'm never coming home. Like I heard you rap, like will you send me one of your raps? He's like, you gotta do it now. I was like 14, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do it. But ever since he told me that, just ran with it and I just thought that I could. And I remember my brother-in-law, he loves me, but he'd be like, nah, that's whack. You're not going nowhere with that. But here we are, man. And you this guys signed crazy. to Sony Latin early. Yeah. So, so mind you, yeah, I wound up signing to Sony Latin, you know, just in the streets, always rapping and kind of like with the radio stations. It was working out at one, like, it, heavily. It, 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 because actually, if, if you remember, the year was 2004. Reggaeton was getting ready to invade the yep. States. It hadn't. So Sony was trying to take... Uh, kind of Spanglish, kind of a, a more of a hip hop twist to it and kind of do Spanglish hip hop. But reggaeton was just a huge wave and kind of just, so one of just being like a yeah. tax write off for them, everybody went home and thank God, you know, cause I wasn't ready for anything. You know, but having said that, I wound up signing three days later, I caught my charge. Wow. But uh, as far as the Spanish stuff, it's just a natural thing. We could have rapped Spanish a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we always had little ideas, and we kind of did a song before. We, yeah, it didn't work out. Too we well performed that. I was like, "What were we thinking?" Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> it was but, bad. But it was, it was so bad. it's natural, you know. Our our roots, you know, when we really sat in the studio and kind of worked the records, they came out fast. Yeah. Like I wrote some of the Spanish stuff faster than my English stuff, and I haven't written I haven't written Spanish in like fifteen years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. And uh, I mean, for me, it's funny because um, I when I started going to church. My buddy, Gavi, who's now a son of Reach, he actually the one who brought me to church. And so when he brought me, you know, um, he was like, you should rap. And we started rapping, and that's actually how it all started. I always rapped with this idea of, I want to be a Christian making good music. And so then I stopped when I, was a, I became a youth pastor. I got saved, was working at Nordstrom corporate. So I'd work at Nordstrom 40 hours a week, then I'd uh, I worked at a church, and they put me through Bible college and uh, the whole thing. And um, I stopped doing music because everything got so hectic. And then when uh, I had a situation where the church kind of just crumbled, the pastor was having an affair, and it was just a huge mess when that happened. I left, and I said, I don't, I don't I'll ever come back to church. And um, the, the, the people that brought me to church originally, they're the ones who kind of just kept loving on me. And they said, you know what? Like... We love you. There's a call of God in your life. Don't let this one situation affect everything you do. You know, this is one toxic situation that you're out of. But in there, I learned so much. You know, like, God has you certain places for a reason. You know, Joseph had to be in prison. Joseph had to learn in the prison. He had to be in the pit before he could be in the palace. And so, for me, I had that, that experience when I came out. We started Social Club, and I was just writing what I was going through. And those songs about, you know, there, it was almost like a diary of music that we were just writing. Friend was coming out of prison. I was coming out of this terrible church situation. And we were just writing songs about God. And it was just such a raw yeah. and just intensity that it began to take so much traction. It kind of just took off. And so, so our, first al our first unofficial album came out in 2014. Our first album came out 2017, yeah. Misadventures. And now yeah. we're really on our second album. Even though we've released a bunch of mixtapes before we got yeah. signed to Capitol. Yeah, we're like rookies and veterans at the same time. <laughs> we dropped like 30 albums and like, yeah. this is our first two anyway. Yeah. This has been an amazing experience though. So. Yeah. You just dropped the video for number one, a song for you. Give us a little background into into I got that, a, that video, that story. And, I got and a, a great, great backstory for that, to be honest. I was at a, 
I was at home, you know, usually I create at the, from the house, we get to create from home. So I was just looking for that next, you know, what's gonna be my next thing I could mess around. We were done with, we we're almost done with the yeah. album. A couple of songs short. I thought I had a solo record already from another producer, but it wasn't panning out. So like one of my boys kind of sent me something and it was originally for his album. He's just sending it to me because you know, you share stuff. And so I heard it and it was just a hook. It was the hook that's on there right now. And I'm like, yo, can I write to this? He's like, go ahead, write to it. So I wrote what turned out to be the first verse and uh, and I sent it to him. But then like the next morning we had to go somewhere and I'm like, I never played that much music for him that much. But to be honest with you, I was like, I freaked out. I was like, so happy. I was like, yo, I got to play you this record right now. Like, can I play it right now? Let's play it. So, and then you know what? We knew right there, we're like, yo, we got to try to get it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I don't know if I could get it because he's going to use it. So I called him from the airport. Uh, we were eating breakfast pizzas, and I'm like, yo, listen, man, I know this is your record, but I gotta have this record, bro. Is there any way I could have it? And we were kind of talking about it. Make a long story short, by the end of the pizza, kind of had the record. Shout out to Ruga Raj. He actually yeah. sang the hook. He, fun fact, he actually produced Having Said That, and he wrote that. Wow. Yeah, so um, very cool dude, and uh, so he, he gifted me that song. We were able to put it on the album. So the way that it came in conjunction with Canal Street Movie is that, you know, me and Marty were supposed to be in another movie called Restored Me with Ryan Lamar, another production by him, three, four years back. But we were just so busy back and forth, we didn't have the time to lock it in. So finally, uh, one day, I'm just chilling and I see on Facebook that he's kind of like finishing up this movie. So I go to congratulate him and I had his phone number, so I text him. Congratulations, hey man, sorry we couldn't work something out last time. Should anything ever come across, hit me up. He's like, bro, I still want to shoot some scenes for this movie. Like, are you available? And like, um, I was like, yeah. So like three days later, I'm in Chicago filming. And so I got me a little cameo role in the Canal Street movie. And uh, the, the way that I wound up getting the song on the movie is that as he's Ubering me back to my hotel to go home, I just look over to him because I just had a eureka moment. I'm like, hey, can I pitch a record for this movie? He's like, yeah. I was, he's like, you got something? I'm like, I got something. So I, I send it to him. And so now it's one of the main songs on the thing, on the soundtrack, so it's super dope. It's gonna go through scene, it's gonna be in the scenes and all that. And, uh, and Ryan Lamar has just blessed my life, you know? He's uh, opened me up to acting a little bit. He loves the brand, he loves Social Club, he, he's wild about us. And he literally, like, it's like a fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 like, video. Like he came to my house with all that, like 20, 30, 20, 30 person crew, permits, cops on my block. Like it was, we shut the beach down so we could shoot our scenes. The traffic is behind us. This was a whole like a uh, major motion picture type of deal. That's why I kind of call it a, a vidi movie. Cause it's not like a normal video. Like I don't want, this is, I don't want people to get it misconstrued. Like I know sometimes it's humble beginnings and you gotta like rap on the railroad track. Mm -hmm. But after you've seen it 60 times, maybe you could think of a different place. <laughs> so that's what, that's really where I was with it. I'm like, I'm done shooting. And the graffiti wall, the railroad tracks, walking down the pebble road. Like it's time to like really make a movie. So I wanted to take the opportunity that was given to me and do the best that I could. And now you have the number one of. And the songs are really good. Anti, it's actually an anti-drug message. Yeah. If you notice, I don't know if like people haven't probably really noticed, but I'm really freaking them out. I'm like, no more Xannies to the face. No more Xanax, like don't take Xanax anymore. Which is so countercultural because you know right now, I mean, there's even a rapper called Little Xanny. Yeah. And like right now, the big thing is that's such a popular drug in our culture, Xanax. Yeah. And so, you know, it's supposed to be an antidepressant, but depressant, but people are getting high off it. It's yeah. such a, and people are dying from it. Recently, a rapper, two rappers just passed away. They were Xanax and taking lean and they died from it. So it's funny that I always think about Social yeah. Club, so anti-countercultural, anti like we come in with a song that says, don't do this anymore. Yeah. Like God can free you from this addiction. And I mean, that's really what the song is about. We, it's were, great. we were just tired of seeing kids die yeah. every single day. Kids were just like dying. Like, oh, he put me onto this rapper and I'm like, yo, he died the next day. Yeah, he died. I couldn't even enjoy him. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, we kind of got tired of seeing kids die in our culture and we want to do what we can at to put a stop yeah. to it, yeah. as simple as that. Say there's a kid watching this video right now and he's struggling with that, she's struggling with that. What do you say to him? A couple things, number one, um, if you are struggling, I want you to know first off your identity is the most important thing about you. Your identity, you are a human being but you are created by the, the, the one who created the heavens and the earth. So That's there's right. a value on your life. So. Maybe you're taking it for recreational use or maybe you're just depressed, but I want you to know that 
There's a God in heaven that handcrafted you. That you're valuable. God took time on you. So number one, you have to understand that you were meant and you were born with a purpose. And that purpose is not just a low level, just make it through life. You're meant to soar. So number one, you got to understand that you have, there's an identity on your life. There's a call of God in your life. Number two, you have to understand that maybe you don't have a local church, but local church for us is really like a pillar in our life that's because right. that's where you can get around people that can challenge you, love you, do life with you. And, um, you know, I, I would encourage you to go to a local church. And, and another thing is, I mean, you have to understand that a lot of times people do drugs because it's cool at the moment. Every, every, every year there's a new drug, new something. I want to let you know, like, you don't need that. You just don't need it. I mean, you probably have the best what, message of what, all. So what I just... want, yeah, what I want to say is, like, I know probably this angle doesn't even get discussed a lot. But, like, when it comes to things like Xanax, once you get hooked and you're hooked... It's very dangerous sometimes to get off. Even if you yeah. want to, it could be dangerous. Like you could die from withdrawals and things of that nature. Make a long story short, I know some of you guys are scared to get off because of withdrawals and because of the after things that may come. Listen, you gotta take the step. At the end of the day, if you're watching this video, what we wanna do in this video is let you know to have the freedom to stop, seek help, yeah. but know that God's gonna walk you through. I don't want you to just stop, seek help. I need you to add the God part as well. God is gonna help you. Because yeah. this is supernatural. People are dying. So the thing is, it's like obviously people are trying to do it on their own and they can't. So this is something that you have to do a walk with somebody, a buddy that you can really trust in your yeah. life, but also know that God has to play a part. This is a supernatural thing. Yeah, yeah. So you can't just get off it. You know what I'm saying? I've actually been seeing a lot of rappers, oh, we're off it, we're off it. Listen, it's kind of like a mixed message because I remember when I was going to, when I was going to prison, I was kind of chained up to somebody who was hooked on heroin. And so we were, we were handcuffed together and he's sitting right next to me and he's puking his brains out on my leg, on, I couldn't do nothing. And they're just, it's just a sickness. And I know some people are afraid, but yeah. don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Trust God and trust somebody, yeah. trust somebody that you know. Yeah. Trust somebody who knows what they're doing. Yes, please. And I think that it's important to, that, that's a big thing. Like. Just don't go to somebody who feels like they can deal with it. You yeah. need to go to a professional. Real deal. Go to somebody who can help you. I mean, you know, a lot of times we try to hide what we do because we're embarrassed of it. But you know what? It's actually the strongest thing you can do, which is to come out and say, I'm struggling. I think that's where God intervenes is when we tell God, like, I need you. That's when you give permission for God to move on your behalf. And, and that's when you say, you know, that's when God can work. But unless you allow God and give Him permission to act surrender. Yeah. and to surrender. Yeah. And so, you know what? I would rather you be embarrassed but be alive. If nobody told you we love you and we believe in you, yeah. you could do it. The idea of Social Club, we, I got the name from this movie where these guys would hang out at Social Club and they would talk about real life. But they felt like it was a safe place too. And so a lot of times you don't have that safe place. So what we do with music is we talk about it and we open up the conversation, That's the right. conversation piece. So we feel like, unfortunately, people like to hide the realistic factor of life where things actually do happen, things go wrong. You know, we don't want to do that. We want to unearth them so we can get rid of them or deal with them and, and let God handle it. Because we don't want to be people who pretend to be Christians. Like, we want to be people who live this out, live this truth that God loves us. We have a calling of God on our life, and we're just trying to share that message with that the youth today, I mean, right. honesty and the realistic factor, I think, play a big thing in what we do. We're just two guys who love God who make music. That's it. And we're social club misfits. Mm -hmm.